After weeks of speculation, iOS 10.3 is finally here. So today Apple released 10.3 Beta 1, and in this video you guys will find every feature, every change Apple placed into this firmware update. I did my best to dig through it and find the smallest things that you guys will not find anywhere else because I personally was surprised to even find some of them in the weirdest areas. But anyways, there are over 30. So I'm gonna be showing 30 features and changes in iOS 10.3. Now I wanted to mention that alongside 10.3, Apple did release macOS 10.12.4 beta, which includes a night shift mode for your Mac. How cool is that? So aside from 10.3, you'll be receiving that cool feature on your Mac, but let's get into the juicy details. Now don't be deceived. Everyone is saying Apple didn't release a theater mode, but they did. It's not the one we wanted, but they released one for the Apple Watch. So let me jump into the watchOS 3.2 beta and they actually did mention a theater mode for the Apple Watch. What it does is it enables the crown to be shortcutted to disable the screen activation with hand movement and any sound on the Apple Watch. So something that was really annoying to me in the theater when you'd go to eat popcorn, grab some popcorn, your watch just keeps turning on and theater mode in the new beta will disable that. Kind of cool. I really wish Apple would give us the true dark night mode in iOS 10, but unfortunately that's something we're probably gonna have to wait for the iPhone 8 to get. Now the biggest change in iOS 10.3 is the addition of a tool for finding lost AirPods. So within the stock Find My iPhone app, you'll now see a new category for AirPods. Now if you ever lose these, as long as you're connected via Bluetooth, which is up to five to 10 meters, you can emit a sound on the AirPods that sounds like this. Now it's reasonably loud. It emits a high frequency pitch that actually uh, is pretty loud. You'll be able to find them in somewhat of a medium loud room. Now, don't play this with them in your ears. Apple even warns you because it can get quite piercing and could damage your ears. But yeah, it's a great tool. If you ever lose these guys, find them in your room. Now, the very first thing I noticed when first using iOS 10.3 was that when you would open or close an app, there is a new animation. Well, not so much an animation, but a new view for opening it up. So when you open it up, you get sort of a card view that expands and it's now rounded on the corners. So I'll slow this down. It's a little bit rounded. Before it wasn't like that, and it actually works very well. It reminds me a lot of the new Snapchat update, but basically this is what it is. So it seamlessly blends into your uh, display itself when opening, so not bad. Now open up settings and on the very top, you will find a new section. So this basically takes all of your Apple ID and iCloud data and combines it into one. So you basically don't have to go and dig around through individual settings, everything is here. So you'll be able to see iCloud, iTunes data in here, all of your devices, which is really nice. It streamlines things a lot. Now jumping into iCloud data over here, you now have a new data storage meter up here. And it's actually very user-friendly. You can see what's taking up your data just by looking at it right there. So moving down in the iCloud settings, previously we would have a backup tab, but it's now been made iCloud backup and it's now on the very, very bottom. And iCloud Drive is now a separate option down here. Previously, it was its own little tab. And if you scroll down even further, you now have third-party tabs for different applications over here. Previously, you didn't have that. So you can manage your iCloud Drive data for individual apps. And if we scroll even further, there are more options for advanced. So you now have mail and look me up by email instead of just share my location. There is also a new tab for name, phone numbers, and email. So you can manage all of that data from in here, basically how you interact with your device and what it calls you. Also, there are notification settings over here. So for promotions or notifications that Apple sends you, you can choose and filter what you want them to send you here. Now, if we jump into the cellular tab over here and scroll down, you'll notice that iCloud Drive actually has its own individual tab where it didn't before. And jumping into maps, there was a feature previously that when you zoomed in onto a certain location, it would show you the weather for that location. Now in this newest version, you can actually 3D touch on it and it will show you the hourly forecast and more information here. Really cool. And there is now a new podcast widget. So in your widgets view, you can select it and it'll show you your most recent podcasts. This is what Siri can do now. Siri, show me cricket scores. Scotland lost to United Arab Emirates by four wickets in the OD match yesterday. So cricket scores now. And you guys remember how in the iOS 10 keynote, Apple was bragging about how Siri will be getting much smarter. Well, she can do several new things in 10.3. You can pay bills, check the status of payments, and even book rides for Uber or Lyft in the future tense. So instead of just now, you can say in five hours, I want a ride from Uber and she can schedule that. Now, for those of you that use reduced motion, it has now gotten smarter. So 
Certain applications in Safari, mobile web applications, didn't conform to reduce motion standards. So they would still use some sort of motion and drain battery life, be a little bit more intensive. Now, individual Safari web apps will not be using motion when you have this enabled. So you guys know those annoying pop-ups for rating apps whenever you download a new application within five minutes, you get it. Well, now the developers have a new option for you to rate apps within the app. So you don't have to use the pop-up itself. It'll make things a little bit easier. Also, if we jump into the actual settings for the iTunes App Store, there is now an opt-out option. So if you don't want in-app ratings and reviews, you can disable it here. And when setting up your iPhone for the very first time, I noticed that there is a new analytics page. So instead of diagnostics and usage, they renamed it and it's now just called iPhone analytics, more for a broader sense of everything. And a couple changes in mail. So I'm gonna jump into a thread. Basically the overall layout is changed a little bit. It's been streamlined and the back button is a little bit more prominent now. So it'll show you how many messages you have in that rounded little oval over there. Overall, a nice cleaner update. For those that have CarPlay, you will now have an option to launch recently used apps on your interface, and CarPlay will now show electric charging stations. So for those of you with electric cars, rejoice. And HomeKit has received support for programmable light switches. So dimmable, on, off, Wi-Fi connected, it supports all of them. Now also one of the biggest changes to iOS 10.3 is Apple's transition to the Apple file system. They talked about this at the iOS 10 keynote and it's now just happening on 10.3. It's basically a more efficient and optimized storage system for your device. So all of the files will be rewritten into this new language. And basically in a nutshell, what it does is the duplicate files will not occupy more space. It'll optimize cached files a little bit better and it has much greater security and optimized support for flash storage. So it may actually boost the performance of your device. It'll be more secure and more optimized. What's not to like? It's not something you guys will see, but performance wise, you might feel it. Now this will be out in future versions of 10.3, but Apple is introducing a new feature in the App Store where reviewers are going to be able to get a reply from the actual developer. So if they have a problem, they'll be able to reply immediately within here for everyone to see. Face marks on the Japanese and Chinese keyboards have been shuffled around to make it easier to type. In restrictions, there is a new tab that was previously not there. So you are now able to restrict certain TV providers in here on 10.3, whereas before it just wasn't there. In new settings now, there is a new option for you to disable always show next up. So if you don't want that little button down there to go to the next article, you can disable it now. And lastly, the feedback app is back. So you're not able to submit your feedback from in here. And I'm already editing and there's actually new features being found. So wanted to mention these two. The only new addition to the iPad seems to be a one-handed keyboard that is free floating, kind of like a picture in picture mode that you can move around the screen. And it's very similar to the iPhone keyboard. So this isn't actually inside of iOS 10.3 just yet. It has to be enabled manually from a developer's standpoint, but it will be added to future versions of 10.3 possibly. Also, alternate app icons. So another developer found a very interesting toggle. So you can actually submit alternate app icons with your application into the App Store. So depending on different variables, they can be activated later. Like maybe a holiday triggers uh, some sort of decoration app icon. Maybe a night mode will trigger a different app icon as well. Very, very possible. So features wise, that's just about it. A lot of great stuff in there. However, again, I am just disappointed that we don't have that dark mode and I really don't know when we're gonna see it now. This was my only hope. So next I wanted to show you guys which bugs still work and starting with this one. So the crash text message bug, which I just sent to this guy and uh, I'm just gonna be messing around until it hits. But man, Apple still hasn't fixed this and I wanna show you guys that it still does work in this latest beta. So uh, I'm actually kind of curious as to when they will patch it, probably in the very next beta as uh, this has been around for a while already, but here we go, should hit any second now. And I kind of like doing it through the pages because it freezes just in the middle like that. So the crash text message bug with the contact card still works in 10.3. And uh, man, my messages app is still broken. So that certainly is still the case in 10.3. Also the respring bugs still do work. So slide this over, click on this and let go and your device will still crash. Again, super disappointed that the shutter bug has not been resolved. However, I am in talks with Apple. Hopefully I can get the point through that this is an issue. It just doesn't happen with any other third-party camera apps, only with Apple's. 
and I hope they fix this in the later beta of 10.3. And the very last bug that Apple may have patched in this version but will not be immediately apparent is the battery draining bug. So if you guys actually have the unexpected shutdown issue on any other device or maybe 6S devices that are under the recall, this 10.3 beta may fix that in a secret little fix. So I'm kind of curious if you guys are encountering any issues with battery on 10.3. And last two things, so storage before and after updating. I actually had 46 gigabytes before updating after it went up to 50. So actually almost five gigabytes of data returned to me. That's quite amazing. It cleared up a whole bunch of cached files. So that's a nice side effect. Lastly, the Geekbench. Let's see what we got. And we got 3483 single 5802 multi-core score. One of the highest I've seen actually before 3490 and 3722 on single and multi with uh, iOS 10.2.1. So a very nice progression there. And I actually do feel like it is a little bit more responsive, which I absolutely like. So guys, there it is, iOS 10.3 with the theater mode we didn't want and a whole bunch of other features. Let me know what you guys think down below. If I missed any features, I'd love to know. Anyways, have a great day, guys. Peace.